Tokyo, Japan, September 1947. A tropical depression formed down in the uh, main part of the Western Pacific Ocean and became quickly a typhoon, Typhoon Kathleen, which then moved northwards and then shot off towards the northeast, weakening before making landfall in the Tokyo region of Japan and was only a tropical storm by the time it got there. But this storm goes to show that it doesn't have to be the strongest typhoons that cause dramatic impacts. This storm was a major flooding disaster, um, with flooding going on in the whole Tokyo wider region uh, over the course of the next few days. Extremely heavy rainfall amounts and rivers were bursting their banks all across the region, with the maximum rain estimate around 611 millimeters. Uh, no less than 2 million buildings were damaged by this storm, including flood damage, uh, with 3,224 reported killed by this storm. The flooding mainly resulting from the storm was obviously the thing that caused all of the problems. Uh, the storm itself, with the strong winds, that wasn't really the issue. It was all of the flooding that Kathleen resulted in. The storm peaked with winds of 105 miles per hour and a pressure of 960 millibars before it reached Japan. 240 were also injured by this storm. Another storm in the tumultuous period of the 1940s and early 50s in Japan. There were many typhoons that affected the country during this period, and this was just another one, but certainly one of the worst in that time. That was Typhoon Kathleen, number 80 on my top 100. Chubu, Japan, September 1965. A tropical disturbance started to get tracked to the southwest of Guam in the first days of September 1965, eventually becoming a tropical storm and was named Trix, headed northwestwards and was hot on the heels of another tropical cyclone, Shirley, which plowed into central Japan as a strong typhoon. Unfortunately, this would be the second in a series of three storms that would cause serious damage in the Japanese islands, and Trix, after peaking as a Category 4, sped off towards the northeast and made a strong typhoon landfall in the central part of the country, shooting off northeastwards through the rest of the islands, and then way up towards the north, turning post-tropical, and then coming back towards the open waters of the Pacific, uh, just off the southern part of the Kanchaka Peninsula. Well, this storm was quite devastating. It caused uh, a hell of a lot of flooding over central parts of Japan. Uh, some of this imagery uh, showing the extent of the flooding and landslides that occurred across uh, the whole region. In all, this storm caused 107 fatalities. That falling on top of the 73 that we saw from Typhoon Shirley the week before. It also caused uh, 251,000 buildings to be damaged and 8,000 were destroyed. 330 were also injured in this storm, which as you can see caused substantial widespread flooding across the region. That's number 79 on my top 100. Oaxaca, Mexico, October 1997. Next hurricane is Hurricane Pauline of 1997. This particular hurricane was a really strong one, among of one of the deadliest Pacific hurricanes in Mexico as well, and in the Pacific Basin recorded history. It is regarded as one of the strong landfalls in Oaxaca ever in the history. It was, an, it was another October hurricane, a really strange one because it formed in the, near the Gulf of Huantepec and turning to the east and then it moved really slowly to the northwest, intensifying really quickly to a category 4 hurricane, had an able replacement cycle, again Reintensified and stalled when it uh, began to to lose strength ca caused by land interaction. Still, was a really strong hurricane, really small but really deadly and really dangerous. It made landfall uh, one day before dissipating over the state of Jalisco. 
the damages were about almost a half million of dollars back on that time. Currently, uh, positioning among the, uh, among one of the costliest uh, Pacific hurricanes ever as well, with about uh, 705, seven and 750 million of dollars in damages, approximately adjusted to the inflation today with an approximately between 230 to 400 people approximately and but most of those deaths were caused by that typhoid fever and tetanus uh, after the storms arrived not really of the storm surge or the or the storm itself it was uh, the problems that pauline uh, brought after impact salina cruz in oaxaca Ultimately, Pauline's death toll reached 500, approximately, and 155,000 buildings were damaged, although little other information is known apart from those two specifics, and its damage tag, nearly $500 million, although this may be a little low. The storm peaked with winds of 150 miles per hour and a pressure of 937 millibars, making landfall as a strong Category 2, officially, and Pauline is now number 78 in my top 100. Sorsogon, Philippines, November 1987. A tropical wave was first detected near the International Dateline and passed north of the Marshall Islands and then eventually uh, moved on towards the Micronesian Islands. And eventually it became a tropical depression as it got closer to the Philippine Sea and became a tropical storm south of Pompeii and then continued to strengthen as it got further to the west passing by Yap as a category one typhoon and then gradually strengthened and then rapidly strengthened as it got close to the Philippines peaking as an extraordinarily powerful category five storm with estimated wind speeds of 185 miles per hour just as it moved through the Bicol region of the Philippines. It then did a little loop the loop right at the end in the South China Sea as it was wasting away and dying off in the latter days of November. This of course was Typhoon Nina, an extremely powerful storm which peaked with a pressure of 895 millibars and was still a strong category 5 by the time it made landfall in Sorsogon province in the Philippines. The storm was extremely destructive as a result, uh, as you would expect from a Category 5, extraordinary amounts of damage with 176,000 buildings damaged and another 153,000 destroyed. There were also nearly a thousand fatalities from this storm, 983. Despite all of that, the damage in uh, monetary stakes wasn't particularly high. That might be just because we don't know the full extent or it was under calculated, but the number we have here is 90 million. Nonetheless, the actual damage in terms of uh, distinct structures that were destroyed and damaged, I think says a lot more about this storm than its monetary price tag. And that's why I've put Nina at number 77 in my top 100. Catanduanes, Philippines, October 1998. A tropical disturbance formed to the southeast of Guam and continued into the Philippine Sea in the middle of October. This ended up becoming a tropical storm and was named Babs and it started to move towards the west and then turned northwestwards after stalling for a little bit and then when it was starting to make its proper advance towards the Philippines that's when it really started to intensify and it reached a very powerful peak borderline category 5 intensity and made landfall on Catanduanes and then moved through the rest of Luzon as a substantial typhoon with two category 4 plus peaks there the second one occurring just off the coast of Aurora and Quezon Continuing northwards after that in the South China Sea, Babs turned post-tropical whilst it was passing between China and Taiwan, moving northeastwards into the East China Sea and its remnants somewhere near Japan. 
Babs was an extremely destructive storm. It wasn't the most powerful storm on record by any stretch, but it did come off the back of another very strong typhoon, Zeb, which was even stronger than this one. And this storm, Babs, was actually a more destructive storm than Zeb, although the monetary damages weren't quite as high. Nonetheless, 335 people were killed from Babs and 307,000 buildings were damaged, 96,000 were destroyed. That included about 80% of all buildings on the island of Catanduanes, or at least in the main town there, Virac. Uh, and that just really goes to show how destructive the storm is near its landfall. It was also an extremely wet storm and there was significant flooding and landslides that occurred. Uh, with 1,306 millimeters of rain having fallen over the region. So Babs certainly an extremely strong storm and I think is more than worthy of warranting number 76 on my top 100. Palanan, Philippines, June 1993. A new tropical cyclone was developing over the Micronesian Islands, an early season storm fairly early in June and this ended up becoming a tropical depression near Pompeii and then turned towards the west as it became Tropical Storm Corin. It was a weak tropical storm for quite a few days before it started ramping up as more favourable conditions took hold. As it ventured further into the Philippine Sea passing close to Yap, and it ramped up to typhoon status and then became a major typhoon and peaked as a category 5 storm with our estimates 165 mile per hour winds. It then made landfall in eastern Luzon as a category 3, pushed through the South China Sea and then impacted the coast of China to the west of Hong Kong and weakened and then eventually died out uh, near the border with Vietnam. Corin was a very destructive storm, it caused significant issues in the Philippines where many of the fatalities occurred, 76 in total throughout the storm's path, but most of the damage actually occurred in China, around two thirds of all of the damage occurring there and most of the other third in the Philippines. Corin was responsible for 657,000 damaged buildings and 97,000 destroyed. Total damages along the storm's path was $312 million. 853 were also injured from the storm. Corin is number 75 on my top 100 and its estimated pressure peak by the way was 900 millibars. Tokyo, Japan June 1966 A disturbance formed in the deep western Pacific, not far from the Micronesian Islands, and continued through Yap, became a tropical depression over there and became Tropical Storm Kit. It was in the Philippine Sea that traversed northwestwards and then rapidly intensified as it reached the same latitude as Luzon, and then curved northwards and then northeastwards, reaching an incredible peak intensity which we'll talk about in a moment. The storm then veered just off the coast of Japan, passing by Tokyo as a Category 1 before turning post-tropical near Hokkaido and continuing as an extra-tropical cyclone for a little while into the first days of July and ended up near the Aleutian Islands on July the 3rd. Kit was an extremely powerful storm and despite not making landfall in Japan, it caused tremendous flooding damage to the region in the eastern part of Honshu. In fact, 128,000 buildings were damaged and at least 433 were destroyed. The storm also killed 108, quite a lot for a storm that didn't make landfall. And its maximum rainfall total was 760 millimeters, which says a lot as to why we had such problems from this storm. Well, back over the water before it reached Japan, it did reach that Category 5 peak, an incredible one, 195 miles per hour and 889 millibars is my estimate, uh, bearing in mind there was a recon gap uh, when the storm was peaking, uh, so we really don't know just how strong the storm got in the end. That's number 74 on my top 100. La Paz, Mexico, 
September 1976. A tropical disturbance formed off the southern coast of Mexico in the later days of September and became Tropical Storm Liza, started to move towards the north and then rapidly intensified once it got closer to Mexico and reached Category 4 status, an intensity that would hold for a couple of days as it entered the Gulf of California and clipped the east coast of the Baja California Peninsula before making landfall in the rest of Mexico as still a strong hurricane. Liza was a very powerful storm, 140 miles per hour at peak and a pressure of 948 millibars, according to our estimates, and it passed very close to La Paz in uh, the southern part of Baja California Peninsula as a Category 4 storm. It was actually a dam burst that caused substantial damage and an extraordinary landslide and flooding event in that whole region. Um, which caused a great deal of fatalities and significant heavy damages. In all, 1,263 were killed, 18,000 buildings were damaged, 7,500 destroyed, and there were also 4,000 injuries. There were some evacuations along the Gulf of California coast prior to the storm, we know of at least 5,000. The storm also caused monetary damages of nearly $101 million. Liza was a very exceptional storm, uh, having so much power so far north, doesn't get seen that often, um, and will be well known for its flooding impacts more than anything. Its actual rainfall total, not quite sure what it might have been, some reports suggesting it may have been as high as 11 or 12 inches, which is a very high amount, 300 millimeters. But Liza, as far as we see it, we place it at the number 73 on my top 100. Haiphong, Vietnam, September 1881. A significant typhoon pushed through the northern part of the Philippine Islands, probably as a major typhoon, although we don't really know its intensity at that point, moved into the South China Sea and cruised westwards and then northwestwards into the Gulf of Tonkin, avoiding Hainan Island and staying over water, allowing it to make a Category 3 landfall in the area in northern Vietnam. An extremely devastating storm it was, and a lot of people uh, are aware of this storm. It's been... Uh, very popularized throughout history and was an extremely dangerous and deadly storm. Now, reports at the time, and it was carried through modern literature, suggesting 300,000 fatalities, although it appears that that information had one extra zero, and in fact only 3,000 were killed in Haipong, as well as 20,000 in the Philippines. At least that's what it appears to be the actual case. So instead of 300,000, it is actually 23,000 fatalities from this storm. Also, around 20,000 buildings were damaged, and we do know that the storm probably made landfall in Haipong as a Category 3, with 115 mile per hour winds recorded, and a central pressure, or pressure within the storm at least, of 956 millibars. The intensity in the Philippines is uncertain, in fact, completely unknown, just that it did cause severe damage in the area. That's the Haipong Typhoon, unfortunately, not much more imagery than that, and what can we really say about the storm other than what we just know, the bare statistics, but certainly a storm that bears remembering, and that's number 72 on my top 100. Kagoshima, Japan, September 1945. The area had been blitzed in the last few months with the recent ending of World War II and the Pacific War. The Japanese surrendered in the early part of September, but nature wasn't done with it yet. Typhoon Ida is a very interesting case. Um, this is a very old storm that occurred just after the end of World War II forming in the Philippine Sea in mid-September, appearing on surface maps around September 11th, moving across to the west towards the Philippines before turning north towards Okinawa. Several ships, including the USS Repose, 
a, a brand new ho uh, military hospital ship were stationed on the island and were warned to move offshore uh, because of the incoming typhoon. Uh, Repose and several other ships moved to the east. Uh, unbeknownst to them, they were heading straight to the center of the storm. Uh, the newspaper reports that the storm uh, that the ship battered 65 to 75 foot seas for multiple hours before entering a calm period in the eye. What the people on those ships did not realize was the data on their that they recorded on the ship was some of the most incredible that has been noted reportedly as a record storm on the time and potentially a record storm for today. Ida, when they were passing through the storm, uh, multiple pressure fixes and wind reports were given from the ship. While winds increased up to 150 knots uh, during the uh, second passage of the eye wall, what really stood out about the storm were a pair of very intense pressure fixes. 26 millibars, uh, 26 inches of mercury flat, and the more incredible 25.55 inches of mercury, which equates to 865 millibars, with a previous reading of 880 millibars, suggesting this storm was if one of, if not the most intense typhoons on record. Another interesting report from this uh, from the ship was that, uh, although not confirmed it was possible it was reported that the engine uh, room failed to maintain uh, pressure in excess of 26 inches of mercury which also equates to 880 millibars these three fixes the pair of 880 millibar uh, fixes as well as the incredible 865 millibar fix suggest an extremely intense storm and if the latter was accurate would be the lowest recorded pressure on earth beating the generally agreed upon super typhoon tip in 1979 by five millibars so a convincing case for this storm being one of if not the most uh, intense storms on record However, uh, I'm not fully sure just yet, and I'm sticking with my previous numbers, which is 175 miles per hour and a pressure of 891 millibars. Uh, of course, after this, the storm did push through Kyushu, which, as mentioned earlier, had been extremely uh, badly hit by um, the war, of course, uh, and this storm compounded issues there with at least 2,700 fatalities, 50,000 buildings damaged, and 6,000 destroyed from this storm. Ida was certainly a very destructive storm and potentially a very memorable one, but at the moment, quite a forgotten storm in the grand scheme of things, as I'm sure you may agree. That's number 71 on my top 100. Port O'Connor, Texas. September 1961 A Gulf of Mexico monster would be brewing out of a tropical disturbance that developed into Tropical Storm Carla in the Caribbean Sea in the early days of September, becoming a Category 1 hurricane and winding round the Yucatan Peninsula and then going on to intensify much further as it reached the northwestern gulf peaking as a strong Category 4, originally reported to be a Category 5 but downgraded long after the storm. It then pushed inland after making landfall as a strong major hurricane and then shot off towards the northeast becoming a post-tropical cyclone and was traceable all the way up to the western coast of Greenland on September 17th. Carla was an incredible storm in its pressure down to 927 millibars, an extremely low pressure uh, for a storm that didn't get to Category 5 status uh, that as well. It was also very noted for its tornado outbreak, one of the largest uh, in the era. In fact, it was the largest up to that time. And it also produced one very strong tornado, an F4, that struck Galveston, uh, damaging or destroying 200 buildings in that tornado alone. 
The storm, of course, in total was much more damaging than a single tornado would be. 43 fatalities in total, 68,000 buildings damaged and 2,000 destroyed. This was Hurricane Carla when it reached the peak of its fury. 170 mile an hour winds send the waters of the Gulf of Mexico crashing into the Texas coast. Advanced tracking of the storm enabled a half a million people to evacuate to areas out of the path of Carla. Sections of the Louisiana coast on the Gulf were also hit hard by the raging storm. What is left is a shambles as far as the eye can see. Slowly, people are returning to what was once a home, realizing the big task in front of them of clearing the rubble and rebuilding and recapturing a life set back by Carla. At one point, evacuation was aided by school buses, which took nearly a thousand men, women and children to safety. Reports put the total number of refugees at half a million. They were wise to get out in time. Damages ended up reaching $326 million on this storm for the ages in Texas history. It's Hurricane Carla, number 70 in my top 100. Ocracoke, North Carolina, September 2003. Hurricane Isabel was the strongest of the 2003 hurricane season. It was the ninth named storm of the year and would prove to be the monster of the 2003 hurricane season. Uh, it did start forming right off the coast of Africa 10 days before the peak of the climatological peak on September 1st. Moved across the main development region of the Atlantic where it would intensify into a category five. Would meander between four and five a couple more times before starting to rapidly decrease to a category two when it made a landfall in the Outer Banks. The reconnaissance aircraft went into the storm and during one of their missions, found an instantaneous wind of 233 miles per hour, which was a record for reconnaissance data at the time. It also would, during its peak as a Category 5 at 165, would be the strongest storm out of the open waters until storms like Irma and Dorian would come and take those titles 14 years later. It would go on and strike the Outer Banks right around September 14th, September 15th, and would end up causing a lot of damage, primarily in the state of Virginia, where it caused 35 deaths there and sparked an army legend where the 3rd Cavalry Division that overlooks the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery actually did not leave their posts. There is some speculation that they actually did seek shelter against orders. However, that is an urban legend that's well beyond the scope of the scientific detail of this segment. But Isabel would be the most deadly storm for the Virginia and Outer Banks area. The only storm that really comes similar to that would have been Hurricane Floyd in 1999, and then you'd have to go back to Hurricane Fran of 1996 to find similar storms of that magnitude that impacted this area of the United States. Isabel, of course, can't be forgotten as well because of its unmistakable appearance. With its beautiful eye and very large eye during its peak periods, and what they described as a pinwheel eye rotating around itself, a uh, very mesmerizing appearance when you look at some of the animated images. Nonetheless, as we saw, Isabel was a very damaging storm for the US coast, even though it was still only a Category 2 by the time it landed. It did cause 80,000 buildings to be damaged and a further 50,000 destroyed, as well as $5.4 billion in damages. In all, 51 were killed by this storm, number 69 on my top 100. Matanzas, Cuba, July 2005.
The first really big storm of the 2005 Atlantic hurricane season became Tropical Storm Dennis in the Caribbean and then became a strong hurricane as it ravaged Cuba, making two Category 4 landfalls and then rushing into the Gulf of Mexico where it intensified once again reaching Category 4 status before weakening as it made landfall along the Florida Panhandle into Alabama. Moving inland over the United States, it survived as a tropical depression for a little while before doing a loop inland and then continuing northeastwards eventually towards the Great Lakes. Hurricane Dennis was a sign of things to come in the 2005 Atlantic hurricane season. You don't need me to tell you just how bad that season was uh, for the Atlantic Basin. Dennis, though, was a stunner near its peak, particularly its Gulf of Mexico peak on the satellite imagery, and the storm did cause significant damage along the Gulf Coast. But the worst damages occurred in Cuba, where the storm potentially damaged 120,000 buildings. The total amount of structures damaged during the storm was 124,000, with 17,000 destroyed. 112 were killed and the storm caused $3.1 billion in damages. Also, quite notably, 1.3 million people evacuated and even more notably, the storm produced 1,000 millimeters of rain over Cuba, the wettest storm since Hurricane Flora ravaged that area with its extreme flooding back in 1963. Dennis, although quite forgotten in the shade and the shadow of all the other storms of 2005, still has its own right to be in my top 100 hurricane week on its own merits and as such is number 68 on my top 100. San Salvador September 1982. Hurricane Paul is the second deadliest hurricane ever in the Eastern Pacific Basin, and most of the fatalities occurred when Hurricane Paul was actually a tropical depression or even a disturbance or a remnant low in Central America and the southern part of Mexico. This hurricane, it's a clear evidence that even a very weak cyclone can make such disastrous uh, and tremendous destruction based on damages and loss and loss of lives, uh, mostly because uh, the, mountain, the mountainous terrains in Central America and Mexico, mudslides, accumulation of heavy rain, constant rain during the two or three days that Paul remained in Central America and the Southern Mexico actually stalled before moving to the west and becoming a Category 2 hurricane and then uh, made landfall as a Category 2 hurricane in Baja California Sur State and where it caused a lot of damage. Well, fortunately, no fatalities, but well, the, the, the death toll of Hurricane Paul approximately more than 1,600 people. So this makes this hurricane the second deadliest ever in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Uh, and a very clear example of, uh, not even a clear example, that you don't need a very intense hurricane to make such destruction and loss of life. So this is why Hurricane Paul is in the hurricane week. My estimated death toll on the storm is actually a little bit higher, at 2,364, which would mean that Paul is the deadliest Eastern Pacific hurricane. And once again, a lot of that occurred before it even became a named storm. Paul, of course, didn't get retired either after the end of the season, another remarkable feat in its own way. Uh, it also caused $1.1 billion in damages, 18,000 buildings damaged and 10,000 destroyed. Um, a massive amount of damage for El Salvador particularly, as well as neighbouring areas of Central America. Number 67 on my top 100. Beira, Mozambique. March 2019 A depression persisted over the eastern part of Mozambique for several days in the early days of March 2019 and eventually after moving northwestward and doing a little bit of a loop well inland it started to emerge over the Mozambique Channel and became Tropical Storm Idai 
There it is, moving eastwards and then rapidly intensifying to reach its first Category 4 peak and then heading southwestwards, weakening and then strengthening again to a second Category 4 peak before approaching Beira, where it made landfall as a Category 3 on March 15th. The storm then moved inland and affected several other countries nearby, particularly in Zimbabwe and Malawi, and the storm was a very deadly one for the entire region, a big humanitarian disaster and the deadliest storm on record now in the Southwest Indian Ocean. 1,298 were reported killed from the storm, uh, $1.2 billion in damages and 164,000 buildings damaged, 120,000 destroyed. Also, 2,420 were injured and the storm dumped 600 millimeters of rain. It certainly had a decent appearance near its peak intensity and on the ground uh, the effects were widespread and the death toll continued to rise day after day for about two or three weeks if I recall correctly after the storm made landfall as news started to come out from the areas that were cut off for quite a while from the storm. Of course Force 13 did several updates on the storm as well and here's what it looked like when we were covering the storm's landfall. Latest on Cyclone Idai which made landfall at 12.35 a.m. Mozambique time this morning as a Category 3 storm. It's still a Category 2 with winds of 105 miles per hour and a pressure of 966 millibars as of 5 a.m. local time. You can see how it made its landfall very close to Beira. Beira itself was in the eye. The storm passed probably within 5 miles to its north and is continuing to move inland now. The eye, this is what we, we usually see when a storm makes landfall, the eye is shriveling up and will pretty soon completely disappear. So, Idai was a serious storm, ranking at number 66 in my top 100. Nagasaki, Japan, September 1991. A tropical disturbance was first spotted in the very eastern part of the Western Pacific near the International Date Line, eventually becoming a tropical depression far out there in the eastern part of the Western Pacific, becoming Tropical Storm and then Typhoon Mirai as it continued westwards past 160 degrees east bubbling around a little bit north and then south and then through the northern Mariana Islands intensifying once again at this point up to category 2 status and then some more rapid intensification up to category 4 an intensity that it uh, held for quite a few days as it continued northwestwards through the Philippine Sea and towards the Japanese islands passing just east of Miyakojima into the East China Sea weakening but still a strong a uh, category 2 storm by the time it made landfall on Kyushu and then moved through the rest of the Japanese islands making another landfall in Hokkaido before turning post-tropical and ending up near the, um, near the Aleutian Islands. Mireille was a powerful storm at peak, not as strong as some others of course, but with winds of 150 miles per hour that makes it a super typhoon and a pressure of 920 millibars at peak. The storm was still very strong though by the time it went through the coast of Kyushu and the rest of the Japanese islands. Um, an extremely strong landfall. Uh, re record winds were seen at a variety of locations around the landfall zone and beyond and damages were catastrophic. Crop damage was uh, some of the worst seen in Kyushu and in fact the total price tag for damages was at the time I believe a record at 10 billion US dollars. Damages, uh, damaged buildings resulted in 670,000, an extraordinary amount, mainly caused by those ferocious winds, 1,058 reported destroyed. 68 were killed by the storm with 2,862 injured. Mireille was a very impressive storm, uh, getting up to such a high latitude as still a major typhoon. Not many storms get to do that and I guess this is why Mireille was such a damaging storm for the coast of Japan. 
number 65 on my top 100. Wenzhou, China, August 2006. A tropical disturbance first developed in the Micronesian region, passing through Guam as a tropical storm named Sao Mai, becoming a typhoon and then strengthening further over the Philippine Sea and then rapidly intensifying to a Category 5 near the southern Ryukyu Islands and then slamming into the eastern coast of China in Zhejiang province in August. This storm was a very powerful storm to strike China, one of the strongest storms to do so on record, and was devastating in a year that saw plenty of uh, typhoons strike the east coast of China. Sao Mai was probably one of the worst ones. It caused 458 fatalities in all, and 200,000 buildings were damaged. 54,000 were destroyed. It also prompted an enormous evacuation beforehand, with 1.7 million evacuating from the shores. It caused $2.5 billion in damages, Sao Mai, a Category 5 with winds of 160 miles per hour and a pressure of 915 millibars near its peak. Even though it was not the strongest storm of the season, there were a few Category 5s in 2006, Sao Mai was one of the most damaging, and actually the most damaging storm of that year in terms of cost was Billis earlier on with $4.4 billion in damages. This storm made Billis's damage um, exacerbated that region's impacts. Um, and Sao Mai, as a result, ranks in here at number 64 on my top 100. Acapulco, Mexico, September 2013. A relatively short-lived tropical storm that eventually became a hurricane later on, Manuel made landfall first along the western coast of southern Mexico near Michoacan and Colima and then into the Gulf of California where it became a category 1 hurricane briefly before making landfall in Sinaloa. However, Manuel and its teammate Ingrid uh, took their time to uh, cause serious problems on either side of Mexico, Ingrid forming in the Atlantic and Manuel in the Eastern Pacific. And Manuel is probably the worst of the two storms um, from that tag team and it was an enormous flooding event uh, with serious damage along coastal areas as well. From this storm, 123 were killed, $4.2 billion in damages accrued, and 43,540 buildings damaged, 11,000 destroyed. Additionally, nearly 100,000 evacuated from this storm, and once again another example that it doesn't take a Category 5 to cause real, real damage and trouble. Of course, this one was only Category 1, and in some cases even the weaker storms can cause serious problems. Let's not forget that in the southern part of Mexico, where damages were worst, particularly in Acapulco, um, this storm was only uh, a high-end tropical storm and not a Category 1 hurricane when it made its first landfall. Manuel will certainly be remembered for a long time, a cruel scenario in which two storms battered the coasts of Mexico on either side of uh, the landmass. And that's number 63 in my top 100. Xinjiang, China, September 1996. A tropical disturbance in the tropical western Pacific eventually developed into our next tropical storm, Sally, in the Philippine Sea. It was already halfway towards the Philippines when it got named, but still managed to rapidly intensify and become a Category 5 when it was passing just north of the tip of Luzon. 
and then moved towards the coast of China, making landfall pretty much in exactly over Zhangjiang as a Category 3 storm with winds of 115 miles per hour. At peak, Sally was a bit of a monster, 165 miles per hour and an estimated pressure of 914 millibars, but most of its damage occurred in southern China, which was devastated by this storm. 276 were killed, $1.5 billion in damages, but the actual buildings destroyed were an immense amount, 100,000 damaged and 300,000 destroyed. 22 were also injured by this storm, which I think has been quite forgotten. That's number 62 on my top 100. Kagoshima, Japan, August 1971. A tropical disturbance was forming well out at sea to the east of the Agasawara Islands, around 150 degrees east, and then it did a little loop around itself and became a typhoon, its name Trix, moving westwards as a category one for a fair deal of time, gradually, and then started to speed up a little bit as it started to approach the Japanese islands. It got stronger, reaching Category 2 status, and then eventually a Category 4 as it was rounding that bend, reaching the coast of Kyushu as a strong typhoon, although it weakened quickly initially and stayed as a tropical storm or Category 1 typhoon as it brushed through the southern part of the main island of Japan. Continuing northeastwards, becoming an extra tropical cyclone late on the, well, early in September, I should say, um, as it pushed out towards the northeast. Trix was a very damaging storm for Japan, flooding the main problem from this storm. Olive, which had struck a few weeks earlier, already caused some damage to Japan, and Trix made things worse. 44 were killed in this storm, and 122,000 buildings were damaged, 1,400 destroyed. Uh, this storm of course also produced 1100 millimeters of rainfall, that's over 40 inches in one or two areas of Japan. Flooding was exceptional as mentioned, but the interesting thing about this storm is the paradox that it has with its intensity estimates. Um, some of the official sources only have this as a weak, t weak category 3 storm, despite recon pressures having it at around 914 millibars. So either the storm weakened really rapidly before making landfall, or the two planes that recorded 914 and 918 millibars were both wrong. I think it's the former. Um, it would have to be, I think. I don't think we can see two planes being wrong even in this era. And so that's why we've rated tricks much stronger than official estimates at 150 miles per hour to be more fitting with its... Uh, wind pressure relationship, also considering that Trix wasn't particularly large, which lends more credence to that stronger intensity estimate. $51 million of damages from this storm, although I think that was only crop damage, it was probably much more from this uh, also quite forgotten storm, but an outstanding storm, uh, Typhoon Trix, number 61 in my top 100.